Is it visible? Just uh, anyone of you, just tell me if it is visible, then I will proceed because I don't know whether it is visible or not. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. Please do. It is visible. Okay. Yes. So, uh, as we know uh, that uh, in the recent year, there has been uh, actually tremendous growth in the field of wireless communication. Uh, we actually uh, seeing around us uh, lots of devices uh, basically based on the uh, technology that is wireless in nature. And when we are talking about some uh, wireless uh, communication, actually, uh, that has uh, some kind of uh, advantage that we know. I think in this course, uh, you must have heard. Uh, if you go for any communication devices uh, it is uh, having some challenges in terms of because the link are actually uh, having in randomness variable uh, it is in open space then the challenges arise how to actually effectively use uh, how to effectively transmit any any signal uh, to the intended receiver so uh, for that actually uh, one of the uh, uh, way that is being designed is to how to uh, design your signal and how to transmit in open space and then how to access those actually uh, signals. So there has to be some kind of access mechanisms how to access those things. And then uh, some kind of uh, um, uh, some kind of uh, uh, techniques should be there so that uh, uh, interference uh, due to the other uh, users uh, should be uh, should be mitigated. So uh, if, if you discuss in the current scenario, there has been uh, devices and then uh, uh, these devices basically uh, depends on uh, uh, two parameters actually if you are talking about the communication point of view uh, one is uh, regarding your uh, what is the bandwidth uh, a kind of channel because uh, uh, the, where the signal has to be transmitted and the other is that uh, what, what kind of power control uh, that is being allowed or that is being used by this uh, this transmitter so these two things actually play important role because uh, one cannot transmit uh, with high power because these wireless devices are mostly battery operated and then uh, in that case, it may drain down. So efficient uh, algorithm has to be uh, used so that uh, uh, optimum performance uh, should be achieved because, because the battery should not get drained out. And the second approach is uh, uh, parameter is your uh, bandwidth because the bandwidth is limited and these things are actually uh, natural and controlled by uh, some uh, authorized agency like a government body. So in that case, uh, how to uh, how to allocate this band because you cannot ask a luxury band okay i can have uh, such many bands and then i will transmit because uh, this this band actually uh, limited in nature so it has been uh, observed uh, in the year uh, 98 that uh, that most of the actually band actually uh, that fcc federal communication commission uh, there is a spectrum task force uh, they measure actually the band and then they found that uh, most of the band actually are uh, not being fully utilized and uh, if if they have done some survey uh, basically in the range of 30 megahertz to 3 gigahertz and these bands uh, was uh, found that uh, they are not utilized in terms of either uh, either uh, what we can say that in temporal manners in time domains or uh, they, they are not used uh, in terms of uh, uh, spatial domains uh, based on certain geographical region and also uh, there has not been some kind of uh, a better efficient access technology to you explore those bands. So uh, these utilization actually are very less and uh, it is as low as uh, 30%. So in that, uh, not 30%, uh, it is 10 to 15% mostly. So then uh, Joseph Pithola actually, uh, one of the researchers uh, from the Sweden uh, Royal Institute of Technology, they, he actually proposed one uh, technique that how to effectively utilize this band. And that uh, that concept that actually coined a term as cognitive radio. So we'll see that what is cognitive radio. So if you go uh, by definition, this cognitive radio is an intelligent wireless communication system that is aware of surrounding environment, that is the outside world, uh, uses the methodology to of understanding by learn, understanding by building to learn from the environment and adapt its internal states to statical variation in incoming RF stimuli by making corresponding changes in certain operating parameters like transmit power, carrier frequency, modulation strategy in real time. With two uh, objectives in mind, highly reliable communication whenever, wherever needed, and efficient utilization of the radio spectrum. So basically what it says that a community video is an intelligent wireless communication. It senses the surrounding environments, uh, finds which of the bands are actually uh, are, are free, then it changes its uh, statistics uh, various means uh, it changes its uh, transmission uh, properties 
like uh, what's with the transmit power and then uh, it keeps in mind that okay when it is uh, going to use some band and change its transmit power it's not harm actually other user that means it should uh, use that band for its own communication whenever it required and it should effectively utilize that band so if we go uh, from figure if we can see that uh, uh, in the figure uh, a uh, we are having a secondary transmitter uh, a pu transmitter and pu here so if you can see here that uh, a pu transmitter a, a su transmitter can use or can use the same band uh, like uh, let's like suppose in this case uh, if you're talking about the tv band because the band which we are trying to explore if if some bands are actually uh, very less variable like tv transmission because tv does not transmit all the time it, it transmit you know transmit certain times uh, based on certain geographical regions uh, their uh, signal might not be available so the variation in that band actually very less so if we consider such a scenario this figure depicts uh, that case so su transmitter actually transmit in the same band but what is happening is see that pu receiver is outside its range so actually su transmit with a limited power and that power if it transmit it is not going to harm the pu transmitter actually the pu receiver sorry because pu receiver will get interference so this is a boundary where uh, this su transmitter must find or must evaluate uh, the kind of transmit power it should have so that it should not harm pu receiver so this is some, somehow uh, one of the conceptual view. The second picture depicts uh, the case that is uh, mostly uh, known as uh, dynamic spectrum access scheme. It says that uh, secondary user, uh, we, are we, are uh, we are calling uh, a user secondary users who are not supposed to uh, use a band, meaning they are not licensed to that band. And the user who are actually authorized to use a given band means who has paid uh, for a particular band they are called licensed band and primary user band. So we'll use this terminology uh, PU as well as SU. So uh, the community radio we are talking about. So uh, we are talking community user as a secondary user. So secondary user actually sends the given band. And if it finds that, OK, uh, some of the bands that are not being utilized, then that band has to be explored. So this vacant band, the band which is not being uh, utilized, that is the whole spectrum whole, that is called white space. So it tries to find out a uh, white space. And then if it is found, then in that case, it will explore that band. So this technology uh, seems to help uh, to better utilize the given spectrum. So if you are uh, thinking uh, that, OK, what are the functionality of a cognitive radio? So it has, uh, it should have a, a spectrum sensing analysis uh, of property. That means it will sense the uh, Give a spectrum. We'll try to find out what are the spectrum hole. Estimate the kind of interference. Uh, use that information for spectrum sensing to schedule and make a decision to access a spectrum. That is, uh, it has to uh, uh, see the surrounding environment. Estimate uh, the kind of interference and then a spectrum holes. That is the uh, radio scene analysis from the figure you can see. Uh, the second uh, step, uh, CR must be able to uh, manage uh, manage the uh, band because see. When a, when a unlicensed user is going to use a particular band, the particular band is owned by some licensed user. And that licensed user may come anytime. So when the user is supposed to come at that time, it actually vacate the band. Because the unlicensed user are not supposed to uh, uh, use the band when the PU is there. It should not harm the, uh, the primary user. So in that case, it has to vacate the band. But when it is vacating, then in that case, its own communication will get hampered. Its quality of service get degraded. And that we have said that in the definition that it should uh, be in a way that it should provide highly reliable communication whenever wherever needed and should if it's, uh, effectively utilize the radio spectrum so in that case it has to vacate the band so there should be some proper mechanism so proper management system so that uh, 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 a scheme should be uh, there uh, where uh, the band actually uh, a series of band will be available and if any user is uh, supposed to uh, leave a particular band uh, because the the user which is licensed in that band is coming then uh, it must switch to some different bands uh, because it should be given some kind of handoff. Uh, its communication should not get hampered. So this is the second step a seer should have. And then third is uh, the spectrum allocation and sharing. So there should be also some mechanism which will actually coordinate access to the available channels with other users, maybe uh, with the PU. Because see, uh, the quantity user will uh, sense a given band 
it can have a number of uh, a band in series it can have uh, and then it can allocate to a given users among the su so there should be some allocation scheme how to allocate based on the requirement among its user also uh, should take care of the cases uh, where it uh, if it is producing some kind of interference it should also manage among the among the uh, su so that it's not produce any kind of harmful uh, uh, harmful interference so this kind of mechanism should be there that means how to allocate the band within this su or within the uh, within the su uh, means uh, within the su how to uh, how to how to share the band and how to allocate a given pu band to a given user so uh, this third step says that means how to allocate and how to share and this figure depicts the same thing that we have we are discussing regarding the boundary functionality now so if you are talking about this county radio or network paradigms like a spectrum sharing so this spectrum sharing actually can be classified in uh, three ways actually in three uh, three approaches basically one is architecture where uh, uh, it can be divided into centralized as well as distributed where the centralized structure says that all CR users uh, who is going to use a given band uh, will will share its information to the centralized uh, unit where uh, the centralized unit will allocate the band for a given times and based on the given geographical area so in that case uh, a centralized uh, processing unit should be there which will take care uh, which band has to be allocated to which users we usually are talking about in the sense of uh, unless users because uh, this, uh, there should be some kind of database or some kind of uh, uh, hub where all the information uh, regarding that which band is free and uh, for how much uh, time it is free so all the information are kept there actually in that case uh, any user who wants to use a given bands who requires some channels in that case it will ask the centralized unit and in that case centralized unit will allocate uh, to a particular user uh, based on the given geographical area and the time duration up to which it's, uh, it has to be allocated so uh, that is centralized and distributed uh, somehow that all the user will uh, share its information so this is one of the way to how to uh, share the spectrum and the, it has been found that this is having some low complexity in order to share the spectrum because this band are actually being available some centralized unit in that case the user just has to inform and then has to collect the band because each user is not supposed to uh, access the band or or, or sense the band uh, rather than it is being done by some of the hub or or, or centralized uh, unit where it is kept so uh, this is somehow uh, less complex but we, uh, there is another approach uh, that is uh, spectrum allocation and that is also a kind of two type one is uh, cooperative another one is uh, non cooperative so in cooperative uh, we are saying that in the sense that each user will cooperate with each other so when the user are cooperating with each other in in this in that case uh, the chances uh, of uh, utilizing the band which gets improved because we know that in case of wireless communication uh, there are certain un, uh, uncertain things are there uh, regarding wireless because this is multi path uh, fading that we know there can be fading shadowing path loss and due to that it may happen that uh, some of the time uh, a user may not be able to sense a given primary user maybe the hidden terminal problem may happen because of the path loss so in that case cooperative uh, scheme uh, gives a better uh, performance when the user are sharing their information in order to uh, share a band whereas the non cooperative users users are not sharing any information with other users and they are independently sharing the band so obviously the, this approach actually will result uh, uh, result uh, we will give a less uh, utilization of the given band which it is not exploiting the utilization of band fully then the, there is a third approach uh, that is spectrum access and under this category uh, there are three scheme i will say rather four scheme uh, one is underlay overlay and interweave and uh, the fourth scheme uh, can be given as uh, can be a hybrid kind of thing where actually uh, two schemes can be merged because each scheme is having uh, some kind of benefits and also uh, has some kind of uh, losses in terms of utilizing the given spectrum so uh, we will discuss mostly about this uh, spectrum axis because uh, i think uh, what i said regarding concrete radio it is nothing but uh, a technique 
or a technology which actually helps to uh, uh, utilize the band more efficiently, existing band, without any uh, requirement of the band from the uh, government agency. So whatever the band is there, that is being utilized using this technique. So one approach that we're talking about is underlay. Uh, in this technique, the approach says that uh, a given user, a given secondary user, can utilize the primary user band, the band which it's supposed to utilize, uh, it can use at the same time. Means it can transmit uh, as, uh, concurrently with the PU receiver. But what SU will do, it will do, uh, it will maintain its transit power because uh, the PU receiver is having some kind of interference temperature limit. That means it can tolerate some kind of interference. And if it can tolerate, its quality does not degrade. Because in this case, CR mostly we are trying to protect primary receiver because uh, this did not uh, get any harmful interference. So in here, uh, this PU has certain a limit, and based on that limit, SU actually will transmit. So in the in the figure, we can see that uh, SU is transmitting, but this shaded area, uh, this is the limit. So if it transmit uh, during this time, during this uh, uh, with this power, then obviously it is not going to harm because this is the limit that is being maintained uh, for the primary receiver. So it can transmit concurrently with the PU receiver. But under this scheme, what are the requirements? Requirements from the SU side is required some kind of side information. Side information since it requires a kind of information that what is the limit or interference limit that is uh, required from the PU receiver point of view. So that kind of information is required. And that is being fed by uh, some kind of a band manager, a mediator will be there, uh, who will actually provide a kind of information that, OK, what is the you know, interference limit set by the primary receiver? So based on that, this ACU receiver will try to control its power and then transmit in a given band. So it can utilize that band. But what is the problem here in this scheme that SU has to limit its transit power. So if it is limiting its transit power, obviously its coverage range gets reduced. And that's why its throughput somehow gets reduced. So we'll see that how to enhance the performance under this scheme uh, that is underlay uh, uh, sharing a scheme. Now, we'll say uh, that uh, what kind of uh, performance that is really, uh, that is uh, measured in this case so one performance is based on the peak interference constraint what it says that it will transmit with a given power but the interference limit set by the uh, pu that is instantaneous uh, peak interference limit should be maintained so that's why this limit says that this power into this channel gain the gain of the this this link su transmitted to p receiver this is the cognitive user so this gain should be less than this power should be less than ips peak interference so this is somehow uh, related to some kind of service that is, that is non delay tolerant kind of uh, uh, services like if you're talking about some voice communications because a user may not be uh, requires any kind of uh, uh, service because instantaneous is voice uh, what we are speaking should be hearable so one can hear that so in, in, in voice kind of uh, uh, services required this kind of constraint. Whereas uh, average interference constraint says that whatever SU is transmitting, but on an average, the interference that is being produced by this SU transmitter at the PU receiver should be below a given average interference threshold. That is uh, some kind of service where uh, a delay doesn't matter actually. So if you say a kind of service like suppose data rate or, or internet kind of thing, where one may not require that, okay, I may require every second uh, such much speed. One can ask, okay, I can have, I, I require uh, this much speed on an average. So in that case, uh, this kind of limits are actually set. So these are some of the some of the performance metric, uh, uh, performance uh, metric uh, when we are evaluating the kind of constraint that one opt in order to analyze this scheme peak interference constraint and average interference constraint. Now, what are the ways which can 
help uh, this underlay scheme so we, as we are talking about this underlay schemes are actually uh, supposed to control extraction power based on the interference limit so obviously in this case uh, the the uh, the kind of constraint or that kind of interference that is being produced actually uh, gets reduced or can be uh, can, uh, can be achieved uh, with less interference uh, if we have a multiple antenna to guide the signal uh, maybe away from the uh, non cognitive user so if we have a kind of multiple antenna if we steer our uh, our uh, signal in a particular direction so uh, and that may help uh, uh, that is another uh, maybe if you spread your signals or wide band and then be spread at the cognitive receiver a spread spectrum kind of thing that may be helpful uh, in case of uh, spectrum sharing under underlay scheme so this is one of the uh, typical scenario where a uh, uh, primary transmitter is there primary transmitter and primary receivers are there a secondary user and a secondary uh, transmitter and secondary receivers both are communicating where this links actually when the secondary transmitter is uh, transmitting this interference channel it has to maintain that's why it's given in red so uh, while communicating this uh, has to be maintained so in this case as i've said uh, this requires a kind of uh, a side uh, channel information that is what is the channel between the uh, acu transmitter and the uh, and the pu receiver uh, and uh, that i've said that uh, this kind of uh, technique actually gives a uh, lesser throughput because the transmit power is actually less uh, that's why its uh, coverage range gets reduced now uh, the problem here is that uh, as i've said in case of uh, if you see this uh, underlay scheme here this su transmitter has to estimate this channel that is a channel between the transmitter cognitive transmitter and the license receiver and that have said that it is being provided by some band manager or feedback uh, feedback mediator sorry so this mediator will help to uh, provide this such information that what, what is the channel information from the pu receiver to su transmitter now most of the time what happens uh, this feedback mediator the channel information that is giving given is outdated because this su transmitter because we are talking about mostly for the wireless communication and the user may be moving in that case this feedback mediator who is there to provide this uh, channel information that is the g of sp we are calling channel game so this may be outdated because at the time when it is requiring at that time already it has moved to some place and there is feedback delay the delay that is happening because of that it may get some kind of wrong information about this channel and once it is getting the wrong information about the channel it can allocate the powers which might not be useful because it can produce some harmful interference at the pu receiver because if pu if su allocates its power based on the wrong information outdated information of this interfering link in that case it can produce harmful interference and that is not allowed so this scheme fails there so obviously one has to take care what are the uh, what are the kind of error that may happen so basically in the literature there are uh, some of the model actually which models uh, the kind of error that may happen one is based on the minimum mean square error estimation where an estimate of the channel is given in this way where this hxy is the original channels and this is the estimated if if, if both are correct then error will be less zero if there are some error then uh, if there are some error then the channel will be something different means be somehow outdated so if this su can estimate that how much error is available here due to this feedback delay then this su will take care of that uh, error and it will allocate its power based on that outdated information so that it should not produce any harmful interference at the pu receiver so that is one of the kind of model uh, that is being modeled using mmsc model Another one is that correlation-based model, where a user, if it is moving, in that case also, the kind of feedback delay uh, is given by this uh, row, that is the correlation coefficient. And if you go for this, this is having a relation with the uh, Jack model. That uh, if 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 you go for and get Doppler effect, uh, that we have seen that if it is moving, then how this uh, effect will cause an error in the received signal. So this. Uh, 
is having relation with that one. I am not showing that mathematical formulations. It will get uh, somehow complex. So this correlation coefficient somehow uh, uh, gives a kind of error. That means uh, whatever the information it is having and whatever the feedback uh, mediator is providing, if both are correlated, correlation is perfect. In that case, it is one. That is perfect correlation. There is uh, no any error. So if rho is one, in that case, uh, whatever the estimated channel, that is the channel between this uh, SU transmitter to PU receivers, I'm calling this H of hat XY. Uh, that is uh, from SU transmitter to PU receiver. So this is the estimated one. If we are having perfect correlation, so then in that case, rho will be one. And in that case, uh, we will have estimated will be equal to same as whatever channel information should be the perfect one, the correct one without any error. So uh, this model will help to analyze uh, the impact of error. Then, okay, if there is some kind of feedback delay, uh, so due to the delay, uh, there will be some kind of uh, error in the channel information. And if there is any error in the channel information, then how to allocate the transmit power of the SU so that it should not produce any harmful interference to this view receiver, that is a license user. And then using that approach, how to uh, evaluate the performance of this SU user. So uh, this is the second. And there is a third model, uh, that is a hybrid model which actually uh, incorporate both kind of errors. Uh, this is a picture of uh, either uh, the user is moving or if it is static, uh, uh, but it is having a kind of error uh, in the channel information. And based on that, one can estimate. So if we talk about this scheme, uh, so the kind of uh, error that we have talked, uh, we are talking about this side information, that one uh, thing I have said, that this requires side information in that side information there may be some kind of error between this feedback delay and the second uh, point i've said that uh, this uh, su the the unlicensed user or the cognitive user will have to limited power and due to that due to that uh, the coverage area gets reduced so one of the possible way is to use the relay relay has some potential application in order to enhance the coverage area so if relay is incorporated with the cognitive radio, then it can somehow improve the performance of the this CR network under underlay scheme. We are talking about this underlay scheme. So this is a particular scenario uh, that, OK, we are having a SU transmitter, SU receivers, one relay is there, and then PU transmitters, PU receivers are there. Now, this SU transmitter will transmit signal because it is having some limited power, but it will maintain this interference link. So it will transmit less power. It will transmit to the relay. Relay will have uh, uh, some kind of protocol. Uh, means uh, it can have, if we are talking about some popular protocol, uh, one is uh, amplifying forward, another one is decoding forward. Amplifying forward relay says that when the source is transmitting, relay will just simply decode the signal. Means it will, it will get that signal, amplify it, and forward it to the receiver. When it is amplifying, what will happen? It will also amplify the noise and send to the receiver. So obviously, this schemes, uh, this amplify forward relay scheme is simple, but somehow it increases the noise also. It amplifies noise also. So it has some limitation. Uh, it has its performance somehow less. But when it is transmitting, the relay also has to maintain its transmit power because when relay is transmitting, it can also cause harmful interference to the Q receiver. So the relay is also supposed to control its powers. And we are actually talking this, this uh, about this model under underlay scheme, where both the users are supposed to utilize a given band. Now, there is another scheme that is called decode and forward. That scheme says that the relay will decode the signal first, because relay may have certain kind of uh, threshold. And based on that threshold, it will decode if it is able to successfully decode it will decode the signal and forward to the destination if it is not able to decode in that case the signal will be dropped so performance of such kind of schemes will depends on the uh, the link uh, on both the links if both the links uh, miss what are the what are the snr what is the signal strain on these two channels so the minimum the channel which is having the minimum strain will limit this performance actually because it may happen that the source to relay channel is very good, but the relay to ch uh, destination channel may not be sufficiently good. It may be worse because we uh, there may be some kind of fading 
a deep fade and due to that that the channel will be very poor in that case if it transmit any signal it will be dropped and then uh, the communication gets failed so this under the scheme if he applies some relay then its performance is somehow better than if he use only this scheme only source uh, only secondary transmitter receiver and one pv receiver because here uh, the coverage gets reduced if he use relay in between that so that will improve the coverage but somehow little bit complexity and the performance depends on the type of protocol that is being utilized at the relay now one thing obvious from here uh, i am just discussing some of the basic thing that when it is transmitting because this is the wireless link so obviously if we are having one relay the chances of this link will be in fade will be more if we are having more number of relay means more links so if you are having suppose out of one relay if we use uh, n number of relay the chances of all the links will be in deep fade will be very less in that case how to select the best link out of n channels is also a problem that how to select which link i should opt what is one is on on this link is that you select the best one from the source to relay and then use that link for the source to relay transmission again as you are having n number of relay so in that case out of n relay you choose which relay is having best link from the relay to destination and then select the best one and select the relay to destination so obviously there are number of protocols at the relay point also that one has to opt in order to design and that will provide some kind of diversity because we know that diversity has uh, advantage in terms of increasing the throughput provide providing uh, less outage uh, probability so this is somehow how to improve the performance of cr network under underlay scheme now this is one of the scheme that i have discussed now there is another scheme that is called interweave paradigm or interweave approach now in this case the cr user actually will sense the given band suppose a given band is there and a, and a cr or cognitive user wants to utilize that band so what it will do it will first sense that band after sensing if it finds that okay that band is vacant then it is going to utilize that band so performance of such kind of scheme actually depends how accurately it is sensing the given band and also how much time it takes to sense a given band now see this uh, uh, the figure 5 we can see, from figure 5 you can see that for a given frame if the total time is t uh, for the cognitive user uh, for total time period now if it spends a sensing time of tau then it is having a transmission time of t minus tau so obviously if you sense for more time the performance will be better because one if 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 one is observing for long time okay in a given band whether somebody is there or not so if it is sensing for more time obviously it can uh, sense more accurately but at the same time it reduces or it uh, it is having a reduced version of the transmit time and that actually reduces its throughput so how to improve this spectrum sensing and that is one of the challenge so there are number of detectors are there in order to perform this sensing performance energy detectors waveform based detectors uh, cyclostructural based detector mass filter based detector but out of that uh, energy detectors are actually mostly used in most of the time because that doesn't require any kind of knowledge about the acu transmitter uh, sorry uh, pu a primary user because uh, if you require uh, knowledge about the pu that's a kind of information that the acu is supposed to know if if it doesn't require any kind of information from the primary perspective then it's somehow simple so this energy detector uh, function based on that kind of technology means it will measure the energy in a given band means uh, the band which uh, the user supposed to utilize it will sense that band and measure the energy and based on certain threshold it will decide okay uh, whether the user is there or not so th this threshold plays an important role that means the noise floor must be known to the user so that it should be able to differentiate between a kind of interference that is being produced by the pu and the noise if it fails to differentiate there then then uh, the sensing may not be accurate so the energy detectors 
has uh, that kind of limitation it depends mostly on the kind of threshold that means what is the noise flow if it is known to the uh, 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 the cr user what is the noise flow then based on that it can measure the energy uh, and then it compares uh, the output with that threshold that okay if some user is there or not if it is more than the noise floor it will decide okay some user is there so there are different uh, performance metrics uh, to analyze the performance of the energy detectors there is a probability of detection probability of false alarm probability of miss detection now if a user a cognitive user is sensing a given band if senses okay that user is actually there so that is required but what happens that is called probability of detection that is perfectly detected now what happens most of the time as we know that uh, between a between a user or let me see between a user uh, see this scenario uh, a cognitive user may not be able to sense the primary user that means whatever the range this pu is having and whatever the range this cognitive user is having this is overlapping somehow but the range uh, this uh, cognitive radio user range is something like this where this pu transmitter is not there that is outside of its range so this when this cognitive user is sensing it will find that okay no one is there in the license band but in real it is there because this there is a path loss and then uh, some kind of shadowing or fading and because of that this cognitive users uh, will have a kind of uh, area which may get reduced a limited area only uh, gets distance gets reduced uh, its coverage area gets reduced so in that case what it will sense that okay somebody is not there and then it will decide that okay the band is free that is a kind of hidden problem so the band is free and then what it will it will start sending so in that case what will happen it will hamper the primary user means it will it will transmit the same time as the primary transmitter also transmitting so in that case our uh, interference will be produced at the primary users and then uh, its quality of service get degrade it may not be able to decade uh, decode the signal so just 5 minutes my dear am i audible so Signed out. I don't know. Let me check once again. If I'm not signed out, okay. Thanks. Yeah, please uh, carry on, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what I was saying that in this approach, uh, the performance actually depends mostly on the sensing, and that is uh, that 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 scenario when this. Uh, see uh, this county user is sensing imperfectly this is called probability of false alarm and that we require very less because if it is transmitting at the same time uh, uh, when pu is also transmitting then this uh, quality of service get degrades of the license band and that is not required uh, that is not allowed in this cr scenario so it has to avoid such situation so it should be kept as less as possible now this third approach uh that is not depicted here there if a user is there that means a primary user is there and somehow this cr is not able to detect that user maybe that user is falling outside or maybe that link is deeply faded that means from the cognitive user to the primary user and in that case what will happen the cu will decide no one is there but in real some user is there there some license user is there so it will start transmitting and then sorry what i said five uh no one is there sorry the case i was saying that no uh, pu is there but somehow due to some noise it detects that okay someone is there due to this uh, variation in the noise floor maybe uh, some kind of noise skit in that case it decide okay someone is there so it will not utilize that band because it it it, it assumes that somebody is there but in real no one is there so that is called probability of missed detection so if there is some probability of missed detection we will try to reduce this one also because uh, that will uh, that will actually reduce the utilization of the band because we are not utilizing the band but even uh, that band was free 
and if there is a false alarm then in that case we should also minimize that because uh, in that case if it transmit there will be collision uh, between both the users uh, from the secondary transmitter as well as this primary user so uh, the approach that is used to uh, improve the performance is cooperative spectrum sensing where a number of user will be there a number of user will be there and all the users will cooperate with each other in order to sense a given band because it may happen or the scenario that we have discussed it may happen that a given link from a given cognitive users may be faded faded in the sense uh, its uh, link quality is very poor so in that case uh, it may not be able to sense that band perfectly and that may degrade the quality of service of this tv if it transmit in that time during that time or if it remains silent in case of misdetection it will uh, actually reduce the uh, utilization of the band so if the user actually if all the cr user cooperate with each other in that case it will improve the performance of this cr means it can more effectively utilize the given band so there are different approach how one can a uh, cooperate there is one approach where it, uh, that is uh, centralized where all the cr will sense the band after sensing what it will do it will uh, send that uh, sensing information to the fusion center this one centralized it will be there where all the user will send their information and then this fusion center will decide that okay which band has to allocate so it will control basically in a centralized manner the other approach is distributed where each share will share its information among themselves it is not going to share with the fusion center so it will be somehow less complex less costly as compared to centralized because centralized each one has to report the, report the fusion center and then fusion center will have to take the decision so all these things are actually being done in order to sense the given band so if sensing time somehow may gets increased but in the distributed case each users uh sharing the sharing of information is between the user it is they are not going to uh, share with the fusion center the third approach is relay assisted where a user may work as a relay because it may happen that okay suppose this this tu transmitter is there and then one one user suppose this this user uh is having that this link is having huh. so suppose uh, one user assume uh, one user is having a strong uh, sensing channel but uh, having a weak report channel so in that case what will happen it will uh, work as a relay for a for a user who is having strong report channel but weak sensing channel so in that case Uh, it will it will work as a relay. It will it will sense a given band that is the primary users. Sense that information will pass it information to the nearest users for 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 whom it is working as a relay. And that relay that user is having a strong reporting channel. So in that way, it can enhance the performance in terms of uh, better sensing. The accuracy of sensing gets improved. somehow it is able to sense a given band more accurately and that is required from the uh, cr point of view so that is somehow known as a uh, relay assisted communication and uh, there may be a number of scheme like see uh, if if, if uh, out of 10 user uh, seven uh, seven or six are reporting okay some few license band is there in a given band then the fusion center will decide okay out of 10 uh, the majority are saying yes some band is there so it will decide okay that band is uh not uh, free that is being utilized so that is some hard hard uh, fusion centers there can be soft uh, com uh, combination also so that is uh, another approach or or, or, the, or given a uh, uh, different area where people are exploring to uh, improve this uh, sensing performance this scenario uh, depicts that how uh, this uh, cooperation in a community radio happens where a cr can can work as a relay Uh, for for a given uh, 
for a given uh, positive uh, users it can uh, work as a relay for pu also so a uh, data scheme will discuss uh, later in the coming slide so until now we have discussed uh, uh, two approaches one is underlay approach uh, second one is uh, interweb approach and the third one is overlay approach so in this case uh, apart from the earlier two uh, in this case also it is uh, somehow same as uh, interweb that means uh, ac will transmit concurrently with the pu but uh, in this case uh, uh, the interference that is being caused by acu to the pu is offset by uh, by allocating some of its power for pu means acu will help the primary user to transmit their signal in return they will ask some of the band that means if some band is occupied by licensed user so what ac will do or the unlicensed user will do it will uh, work as a relay for him actually so while working as a relay because he is working so he will he will he requires some kind of uh, uh, profit from him actually so he will share some of the uh, power is power to uh, transmit uh, that pu signal and uh, some of the power for its own communication so here cr will work as a relay so we can see here that okay in this picture that uh, this uh, blue uh, says that primary user transmit its own signal and in during this uh, time there is some cooperation so in this cooperation the cr actually uh, cooperating with this primary user during that time the other cr users transmitting during that time its own signal so a uh, cr work as a relay here if we consider a scenario that a for a given band that is uh, w node so this band being, uh, should uh, will be utilized uh, suppose using this upper approach so in that is what cr will do it will it will share its power to uh, relay primary user uh, signal that, that is the uh, this portion so uh, if you see this picture so this band is getting divided in two portion w1 and w2 where uh, w1 portion is being used uh, for uh, for cooperation where the w2 portion that is the w0 minus w1 is being used for the cr so uh, this cr will uh, share in the so if if there is total time period of p so out of that time periods what uh, what ac will do during the first time period suppose t1 so during t1 the pu will send its signal to secondary user who is going to work as a relay so that user will work as a relay so it will receive the signal during that time and then after receiving it will forward that signal with a power suppose p of cr i think it's not visible so if you see p of cr cr so with that power because it has total power of p of cr1 plus p of cr2 maybe suppose some power p so some portion of the power is being used to relay the primary signal so it will uh, relay that signal during time t2 and the relay kind of relay that we have discussed it can be af it can be df any kind of relay protocol that is being opted for a given scenario during that time when it is working as a relay the other cr will use during the whole time period t with a different power pcr2 that means what we said that the cr is having a total power of p that is a combination of p of cr1 plus p of cr2 so our p of cr1 is used for relay Purpose. So P of CR2 will be used for the community user communication among themselves. So with that powers, it will transmit during the whole time. So if we if we go for some frequency division approach, uh, and if you are using some this overlay spectrum approach kind of thing. So if we if we discuss uh, this relay protocol, so what we have discussed till now that uh, that relay. can be helpful in case of underlay where uh, it helps to enhance the coverage area it can be useful in case of uh, overlay paradigm where where a cu may be uh, used to work as a relay and in case of interweave a relay are supposed to improve the sensing performance where each users cooperate with each others means they are working somehow in cooperative manner in a relay manner and then they share the information 
of the of the of the Pavilion bands, whether some injury there or not, and then they report that information to a centralized or decide that whether whether some user is there or not. So this is somehow this relates a little bit. Now the the other approach that uh, that I have discussed is hybrid kind of thing. In this scheme, what we have discussed till now that each one each approach is having some kind of advantage because in case of overlay, if we talk about so in this case, uh, SU requires some kind of knowledge about the PU, that is its code book, that, um, because it has to cooperate its signals. So obviously, it requires some of the information, what is the PU code book. So in that case, if it knows, then only it can work as a relay. And then it will transmit PU signal to the uh, to the PU destination, what is it? Whereas in case of overlay, we uh, interview, we have said that uh, sensing maybe should be accurate. So if sensing is not accurate, or, or if it senses, okay, a given band is occupied. So if a given band is occupied, in that case, a CR is not supposed to utilize that band. So that is, uh, in that case, uh, it is not uh, fully utilizing that band actually. Means it is losing the opportunity of utilizing a given band because somebody is there, some license is there. So in, in, if you use interview approach, in that case, uh, during that portion of time, the band cannot be utilized. But if one use underlay scheme, in that case, what it says that it can use a given band all the time, but the required condition is that it should not produce any harmful interference to the PU receiver. So that is the requirement from the PU, uh, from the uh, SU side in case of underlay. So it has to reduce the power. But in case of interview, it can transmit the highest power, but the requirement is that PU should not be there. So if we club both the thing, that is the underlay approach, uh, this is uh, interview uh, I have written here overlay. Uh, mostly this interview somehow also referred as uh, overlay because this interview and overlay somehow similar, a little bit difference is there. So uh, this approach combines all the uh, two uh, approaches. That means if a user is there, then it will work in underlay mode. If user is not there, then it will work in overlay mode. If again user come back, uh, then it will switch back to underlay mode. So if we use uh, a hybrid uh, kind of thing, in that case, it can improve the performance of a CR network because it is utilizing all the time a given band. It is not losing the opportunity of transmitting in a given particular band. So uh, we will have some kind of model uh, because uh, uh, till now we've discussed some kind of theory uh, approaches, uh, how a given bands uh, are, getting, are getting utilized. Now, if we if you take a general model, uh, here we have taken one models that is uh, some old one. Uh, so here uh, uh, a number of uh, SU transmitter is there, SU receiver is there, and uh, a number of relay are there. What we said earlier that if you choose one relay, obviously the link that is a single link and the chance of getting faded will be more. If you have more number of relay, that is means more link from the SU transmitter to SU receiver uh, relay, obviously we can provide some kind of diversity. So uh, that's why we have taken uh, more number of relay. Now, the relay protocol that is being opted here is a kind of proactive DF relay. That means it will select which one link, uh, which link is having the best link. That means uh, it will select the maximum one, and out of that, which one is the minimum. This that means it will select what is the mean of these two link SNR, and then that should be maximized. Because what I said earlier, if you are talking about the DF protocols, decoding forward, the quality depends on the link which is having minimum SNR because that will limit its performance. So uh, this proactive is some kind of uh, scheme where it maximizes the mean of this SNR of these two link. So that kind of uh, protocol is opted here. Also, the channel are supposed to be rally faded uh, channel. And then uh, the scheme opted here is underlay approach and the kind of imperfection that is opted as correlation bit feedback model. So this is somehow how the problem is looking. We have a protocols, we have protocols like this. We have an outage probability of this uh, SNR. This gamma pro is the SNR here. What is the SNR? This is the required scenario, and the constraint is that the outage probability. Uh, if if you don't know, okay, I will uh, discuss what is outage probability. Outage probability says that uh, if 
use if ac is transmitting so the receive snr should not fall a below given threshold right suppose if r is given a threshold so what is the probability that the snr falls below a given threshold r if it is happening then there is a outage in the same way if i am saying something if you are not able to decode uh, then then i will assume that there is some kind of outage kind of thing so that is how outage is getting defined so uh, the outage may happen uh, during this acu also because when acu is transmitting it will produce some kind of interference here if uh, relay is also transmitting uh, acu signal to the acu destination it can also produce some kind of interference now assume this receiver can tolerate some kind of interference means it can go in outage outage in the sense we are talking about it is not uh, uh, getting any signal of its uh, intended transmitter so likewise if you say uh, from the mobile point of view uh, if we are not getting signal for 1 second or 2 second uh, it doesn't harm uh, means we are not getting uh, any uh, it's okay we can tolerate but if uh, we are not receiving a signal for a given uh, for a given service provider so uh, for given for a long time so that may be problematic because nobody will opt uh, that service provider so if so obviously there are some kind of tolerance levels so if few receivers can tolerate such kind of outage okay it can tolerate certain percentage of time okay it can go off for its own this uh, transmitter so we have assumed that scenario so due to uh, su it can have some outage and that is delta so we have defined okay it can have uh, a given outage of delta it should be less than that uh, outage probability also due to relay uh, that outage should be maintained so this is the this is the requirement and uh, as i have said that this link information in case wonderland is important so we have assumed this is imperfect and imperfection is assume uh, having the knowledge of this kind of model that is a correlation based, based feedback model that is a row based uh, model that we had discussed earlier so that model is opted here so uh, if that uh, the erroneous channel information is given that is the uh, g cap we are writing this is the erroneous channel information of the interference link so then how to allocate the power so here a scaling based uh, power is allocated that means if uh, there is some kind of imperfect imperfection then uh the power should be scaled down so some scaling factor should be computed corresponding to a given erroneous channel similarly for the relay also uh what should be the in, if, if some imperfection is there then how to allocate the power and based on that uh this outage probability is being evaluated uh is you know discussed so uh we can see here that if we are having a power scaling factor then how it gets uh, increased now what this power scaling factor that we have said uh, in this given problem that if there is kind of any kind of error in the channel that is the interference channel then the scaling factor should add up according to the erroneous channel because if there is an error it should reduce its power so that the overall interference that is being produced at the pu receiver should be limited so uh, with that kind of scheme you can see if we if you are increasing the uh, scaling factor its outage probability at the pu will gets increased because if you increase scaling factors power gets increased and then out will but obviously if you see uh, the correlation coefficient the correlation coefficient rho equal to 0.1 is the upper one and then rho equal to 0.5 uh each uh, lower one this dashed one and then if you take rho equal to 1 now if you take rho equal to 1 that what we have said that it's a perfect correlation that means there is no error in the channel so obviously the scaling factor uh is one actually it's not required to scale down because the power uh, whatever it's obtaining is perfect the information have uh, received at the su transmitter is accurate so there is no delay uh, no error uh, due to this feedback delay but if there is any kind of uh, erroneous channel that is rho equal to 0.5 uh, there is this once uh, then in that case how this uh, scaling factors uh, how this outage probability changes so this uh, says about the power location scheme that is being uh, obtained now this plot says that how this outage probability varies with the correlation coefficient now what i've said that this outage probability somehow that what is the probability that the receive signal at a given uh, receiver falls below a given threshold so obviously we may require that such case should not happen so that means the outage probability should always be less than uh, should be always be less and in ideal case we require a zero so that may not happen uh, most of the time due to some error so if you see that if you increase this correlation coefficient obviously uh, 
increasing, increasing the correlation coefficient means that uh, the channel information that is being available at this SU transmitter is more accurate. So obviously this outage will get reduced and that we are uh, we can see from here. Similarly, if we increase the interference uh, threshold limit, the other other parameters. Now, what is this interference threshold limit? We have said that um, that the kind of tolerance that the receiver can tolerate. Now, if it can tolerate more, obviously the performance will be better for the SU, not for the PU, because the SU can then transmit with higher power because uh, because PU is supposed to tolerate more. So that is being depicted here. If you see that an interference threshold of uh, five dB and ten dB. If you see, then in, the, in that case, we are having uh, this approach, if you see this uh, this dashed line, this circle is uh, 10 dB, and then uh, if you see this 5 dB, or equal to put this uh, this one, triangular one. So in that case, obviously the outage quality in, in that case getting is very less. Uh, this is somehow uh, I'm just trying to correlate that how it uh, affects uh, the performance of a CR network. Now, uh, one more scenario uh, that we're discussing uh, regarding the hybrid spectrum axis. Uh, this is scheme, what I said earlier, that the RC, a secondary user can exploit both kind of uh, access scheme. That is uh, uh, underlay scheme, uh, where it can transmit all the time. And the other approach is uh, interview approach, where it can transmit only when this uh, unlicensed unli uh, users are free. So if you combine both the approaches, then it uh, the, gives uh, more access to the given spectrum. That means uh, it improves somehow the throughput of uh, of CR network. So uh, you'll have uh, such kind of model where SU will first use uh, the P information, okay, if PU is free and if PU is uh, not free, means whether the given bandwidth uh, being utilized by the primary users, if it is being utilized, in that case, it will go in underlay mode. If it is not utilizing, in that case, it will go in interview mode. So if it is going in interview mode, obviously, uh, no one is there in that band, so it will transmit the highest power. If it transmits the highest power, so obviously, the capacity or the throughputs will be more. Uh, in case of underlay, because uh, because the PU is there, so it will transmit limited power. So in that case, throughput somehow less. But but we are trying to exploit that time also because if you use only one uh, kind of uh, scheme, then we are losing the opportunity to use a given band. And the model that uh, uh, we are mostly uh, considering this for underlay scenario is the uh, this correlation based model. We are we are opting uh, because in case of uh, uh, in case of uh, underlay, uh, we are more concerned about the channel side information. And that's why we have assumed uh, we can have, we are also having some different model that how uh, different kind of error will affect a given scheme. And uh, we uh, have not considered here uh, one scenario for the over uh, interview, because in case of interview, what we have said that uh, there are some sensing performance uh, judged by this probability of false alarm, probability of detection, probability of misdetection, that we'll consider in the next slide. So we have just taken two cases, uh, interview approach and uh, underlay approach. Uh, in case of interview approach, uh, the kind of uh, assumption that we have made that, OK, it is perfectly known that, OK, P is there. How much time? P is not there. How much time? So that statistical data is available. OK, uh, this much percentage of time P is there. So that in present we have take, uh, we have taken, but we have not assumed that, OK, uh, there may be some kind of probability of false alarm or probability of misdetection. So uh, then uh, based on that, actually, we have uh, formulated this problem and then power control that we uh, just described earlier in the slide uh, is same as uh, that okay if pu is uh, present in that case since the uh, since the, we are going in underlay mode so in that case also we have assumed that the underlay the channel is imperfect so uh, it will have some kind of a scaling factor based approach where the power gets scaled down if there is some interference or if there is sorry uh, erroneous channel if there is very more if there is more that means correlation is very less so in that case, obviously, we have to reduce the power because if this channel is uh, outdated, obviously, this power gets increased. So in underlay approach, we are taking this uh, this uh, approach. In case of overlay, since we know that, assume that, OK, the P is uh, not there, absent, so it can transmit its maximum powers. That is P of M. That is the maximum transmit power of the secondary user. So this is how this power is getting controlled. And based on that, uh, uh, some of the uh, performance metrics like uh, similar probability of SU is being evaluated. Uh, that we can see uh, from here, uh, 
kind of performance that we have discussed earlier also that if we increase the correlation coefficients obviously uh, the performance will be better because uh, uh, we are uh, we are approaching towards a more perfect case channel is more accurate and uh, that uh, will reduce that will give a uh, improvement in the performance uh, so that's why we'll have a similar probability less uh, similarly if we have uh, the interference threshold more obviously the performance will be better that means acp should be less and that we can see from this picture that if we have uh, more see this scenario uh, this one is having 10 dv this is having 5 dv sorry this is 5 okay this in this case also we have taken care of this uh, uh, peak power now uh, the other approach uh, that we are talking about that in case of overlay uh, since uh, uh, the spectrum sensing may not be accurate so uh, that scenario is considered here that if uh, there is a, any kind of uh, sensing error, uh, then uh, that has to be considered. So uh, one approach is that uh, it can it can sense, and if it is hybrid spectrum access scheme that is being uh, named, that okay, it will sense the spectrum, and then it will it lies based on the sensing information. It will go in underlay or overlay mode, underlay or intermediate mode, uh, and. Uh, in the second approach, there is a modified hybrid spectrum access scheme, MHSAS, uh, where uh, during the sensing time, because see, the sensing time should also be utilized. So in this scheme, uh, during the sensing time, it will work in underlay mode, but at the same time, it is also sensing the given band. So it is actually utilizing this, this portion of time also. So that is the benefit uh, under this scheme uh, as compared to this one. Uh, and then so we have actually uh, measured the performance in terms of throughput. And we can say that this uh, modified hybrid spectrum access scheme uh, this is a better result because we can see here, because in case of HSAS scheme, uh, this portion of times is not utilized for any uh, information processing rather than this much time is being used. But in this modified scheme, uh, this much time is also used because uh, at the same, uh, if you use underlay approach, at the same time, one can transmit also. So uh, throughput, uh, we are also getting throughput for such time duration distancing, and that's why uh, this performance is somehow better as compared to HSAS scheme. If we use only underlay scheme, then uh, this is the throughput. Uh, that is the that is the uh, straight line. Why it is straight? Because we know that in case of underlay scheme, uh, CR doesn't require any uh, sensing because it can transmit at the same time with the PU. So that's why it doesn't depend on the sensing time so that's why we have plotted with the sensing time so its performance will get affected because whatever the info uh, throughput is having it will remain the same uh, because it's not varying with the sensing time but in case of uh, interview uh, since uh, we have written this here overlay uh, because both can be written so interview approach uh, or overlay that's we have written uh, in that case if you use only overlay scheme or interview approach in that case the uh, throughput uh, will improve as we increase the sensing time it will saturate somehow because uh, if you improve the increase the sensing time somehow it's uh will get improvement in the throughput but uh, both the both the schemes have uh, lesser throughput but if you use the combined one then you can see that this hybrid spectrum access scheme is better one now if you modified this hybrid spectrum access scheme then modified will give a much better throughput as compared to all the conventional scheme one more uh scenario uh where we have considered uh Kind of collision time because uh, what we have said that in case of uh, spectrum uh, sensing that is the interview approach uh, one has to sense the spectrum and if it is uh, wrongly detected uh, wrongly in the sense that okay uh, if uh, misdetection happens then uh, it assumes that uh, uh, someone was there but it is not able to detect what was i was saying okay miss uh, also now uh, was that okay uh, no one is there but uh, it senses somebody is there but if someone is there and if he's not able to detect that is a misdetection happens so it will transmit at the same time that is a hidden problem so a collision may happen so this collision time will also have been considered if you consider this model so why we are considering this model because we are trying to explore a given system and considering all the uh, aspects that may happen so under hybrid spectrum access team, uh, we have assumed uh, for both the cases because in case of underlay, uh, what are the what are the problem or whatever the performance limits that may happen is uh, its power is limited. First case, uh, and second case, it requires channel side information, and that may be imperfect. So we have considered that case uh, for interview scheme. We have uh, assumed that okay, uh, 
in case of uh, interview approach, a spectrum sensing should be accurate. So what are the possibility, the performance metrics are that, OK, a probability of false alarm should be less, misdetection should be less, so not happens, a detection should be high. So those cases we have considered, and we have evaluated the throughput uh, for such a scenario. Uh, so uh, I think I'm stop here. Uh, and if you are having any questions, uh, then please uh, raise your concern. I will be happy to answer you. So if uh, anyone is uh, having any question, if uh, something you want to ask, please ask. Basically, sir, I've explained the cognitive radio, CR, and uh, all the mathematical functions, all the things, okay. and the output also. So if uh, anything you want to ask in this particular field, basically this particular one, uh, sir, is uh, uh, sharing his research and uh, also open several gates for your research also. So if you want to ask anything regarding the subject and uh, regarding the topic, please ask. So I was assuming that uh, the participants is having uh, the basic understanding of this communication. So uh, based on that, actually, I have delivered my talk. Uh, so, so. You can, uh, so you can ask. Uh, if you are having some doubts, uh, then you can ask me. I will be happy to answer you. As much. I think uh, uh, it's clear, sir. And if uh, they have anything, then uh, I will share. And that means uh, my mail ID is also already there. Okay. And we have a WhatsApp group. And then if something uh, they want to ask, then they will ask on the WhatsApp group. And I will forward the question to you. OK, just forward, forward me the questions. Uh, that will be better for me. Definitely. So on the behalf of uh, uh, MCWN, uh, let me close uh, today's session, today's evening. Sir, one question is there by Srinivas KG. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, let me check. It is the difference between cognitive radio and software defined radio. Yeah, yeah uh, it's, uh, the software defined radio is somehow because we have defined this cognitive radio. If you go to the definitions, it should be uh, the cognition, cognition, that means it should be aware of surroundings, should be able to change uh, its transmission parameter. But for software-defined radio, somehow it provides some kind of reconfigurability. That means uh, this cognitive radio is built on the software-defined radio, but it is not the same thing. So uh, that is the difference. CR is built on the software-defined radio, actually. That, that this, it provides one of the tasks like reconfigurability. But this cognition is not there. Is it okay? Because this, uh, the cognition kind of things can be achieved by this uh, machine learning AI, and those kind of things will help you to uh, sense the surrounding environments, uh, uh, provide uh, the kind of uh, the, the band which is doing free, and then at the same time, one is going to utilize based on the what are the transmission parameter, and based on that, it will transmit. So uh, these features. Along with, if we have HDR, that is uh, a kind of reconfigurability if we provide. So this HDR is for just to provide reconfigurability of a given system. So on that, on top of that, this CR is built. And there are some softwares and uh, some of the protocol like uh, universal, universal software radio peripherals, uh, where uh, one can simulate these things actually. And uh, the kind of uh, technique, uh, detection technique mostly uh, use energy detector. I think. Uh, so, uh, what I, are the simulators, sir? Uh, I have uh, said USRP. Uh, one can simulate uh, there also. Are they free or? Uh, no, sir. It's uh, uh, purchasable. Uh, you have to purchase and depends on the type of uh, configuration that you require. Any, any, any free where is there, sir? Uh, or some. Free things, sir. Uh, uh, if, if you are not uh, going to uh, this uh, total, I'm just talking about the CR on. Uh, uh, if you want to build total things like this spectrum sensing, but if you want to explore the performance, uh, one can go for MATLAB also. Uh, you can uh, go for NS3 uh, because if you are going to, because at what layer you are trying to uh, evaluate the performance. 
if you are going for the network layers you can go for ns3 ns2 there you can deploy a number of nodes and that is free this uh, ns3 mostly now is used and not ns2 this is uh, absolute now i think ns3 uh, people use and that is free so uh, yeah. one can use or in i mean matlab uh, one can uh, explore the physical uh, layer properties yes like this uh, diversity uh, using some number of relays and mm -hmm. that uh, that you one can generate uh, this uh, matlab you can generate relay fading channel because relay somehow uh, a complex gaussian random variables and if you have two complex Ga two gaussian means if you are in complex gaussian random variables i think the mode of that will give you uh, the channel gain and then if you take a square so there are ways if you can just search you'll find that how to uh, simulate a given channel mm -hmm. uh basically uh in the afternoon we are having a less a session on ns2 okay and uh, uh tomorrow also we are having one session on ns2 that means uh, hands on of on ns2 okay okay so i think the participants will uh, learn yeah uh, from ns2 ns3 that is helpful if you are somebody is trying to uh, simulate uh, environment like a network layer uh then uh, it's a uh, very useful and it's, it's very useful tool in the uh, uh, or you can say that uh, in perspective of communication if uh, one wants to deploy and understand that how what are the performance limits so this is a very useful tool uh, yeah. once you know okay uh, so i think uh, uh, that's all so let me wind up the session so thank you thanks a lot sir uh, vinod sir uh, for uh, sharing a wonderful knowledge and uh, presenting a very wonderful session so i think uh, the next part will be on uh, uh, 11th evening yeah. so on that day i will i will cover if you are if somebody is having some questions so i think uh, that day i will, uh, I will definitely follow. definitely so that uh, that day will be better for yes. if somebody is having some questions yes 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 so thank you thanks a lot and thanks. good sir thank you thank you so uh, all the participants uh, you are uh, requested to give the feedback and uh, attendance so basically feedback is for uh, one question was there on the uh, whatsapp group uh, why two forms <laughs> only one form uh, can be so but basically feedback is for the uh, session persons resource persons and uh, attendance is for me so in this particular session total 47 participants joined so i am requesting uh, all to fill the attendance and the feedback Uh, yes definitely uh, after filling the forms you can leave and uh, we will join uh, uh, tomorrow morning at exactly at uh, 9 between 9:15 and 9:30 so i already shared the time table with you so tomorrow we have uh, one lecture by dr shikha and uh, this particular lecture is on introduction to noma non orthogonal multiple axis so it's a very uh, recent research topic so if uh, someone is uh, doing his research is or our research or if you are you want to write something that means some paper then this particular one is a very good area so uh, see you in the morning 
exactly at uh, 9.30. Please try to join before 9.30. Thank you. And you can leave uh, after fill the form. Yeah, definitely. Um, I will uh, ask the resource persons to share uh, the material. And as soon as I will get the material, I will share it with you, either on the WhatsApp or uh, on the email. Thank you. Thanks. It's, thanks a lot. So uh, in the next uh, three days, uh, we were having very good sessions. Basically, we were trying to uh, make this FDP as uh, first two days, the fundamental thing, and uh, last three days, some research topics. So I think uh, the next three days will be more beneficial for you being faculty. So 